still morning time. We can do our regular intro. Good, Good morning. morning. And welcome to our show, you guys. Today we have with us a serious power couple that's helping to make the world a better place in multiple ways. Siri Lindley, two times triathlon, world champion, keynote, and Tony Robbins speaker and facilitator, and Rebecca Keat, two times national triathlon champion and former world record holder. Together, you guys, they also founded Team Serious Tri Club, which is number one ranked female club in the world. What a serious power couple. And as if that's not impactful enough yet, they're also on a mission to end horse slaughter. So you guys, they're not just about changing lives, but also about saving lives. And today we're going to be talking about passion, setting goals, overcoming adversity, and making 2021 our best year yet. So if you're ready to make 2021 your best year yet, then drop your favorite emoji because we want to know what your favorite emoji is. Welcome, you guys. Hey. Did you like that intro? Oh I my God, it was it. amazing. Thank you. Most people fluff it up. So you guys, you guys good. were awesome. <laughs> Thank you for that really sweet intro. We appreciate it. Well, hey, it's the truth. But you know, the reality is, is that you guys are up to so many incredible things. And you know what, when it comes to a transformation of any kind, you know, all of the people listening right now, whether it be your community, our community, by the way, like you, all of you guys look so beautiful, you know, we're all on a quest to achieve a transformation, right? And, uh, you know, you guys have been through so much, um, not just last year, but through your lives in general. But, you know, since you're so well known in the triathlon world, let's begin by talking about that for one, like, how did you guys get started with the sport? Like, what introduced you to it in the first place? And also, I would love to know, you said that you fell in love in California. What has brought you guys together? Wow. Okay. You go first about how you started, because we're kind of different there. Okay. Um, so I've been a team sports player my whole life up until I was 23 years old. I played ice hockey, field hockey, and lacrosse, and I loved it. Um, long, long story short, I realized I was gay. My dad found out he completely rejected me and didn't talk to me for two years. And it really left me feeling, um, like I had to go on this desperate mission to prove to myself that even as a gay woman, that I could achieve something that I thought was spectacular that I could make a difference in the world, that I can inspire people. And it was right at that time when I went to watch a friend in a triathlon. Wait, she says it's a friend, but she had a crush on this person. Okay. She only found that out a year ago. <laughs> Anyways, so I was very inspired to go watch my friend in this triathlon. I had no idea what it was, but I watched this and it was so incredible because it was people of all ages, people of all sizes, people of all ability levels. And they were all just like, pushing themselves beyond what they thought they were capable of. And I thought, I need this. This is going to be the perfect vehicle through which I can find me and, and find out what I'm made of and find out how strong I can be. And so I fell in love with this sport. I did my first race. Oh, most important thing of all, I had no idea how to swim. So tell me how you thought you could you Tell them what you thought swimming looked like, the swan. Oh, well, my mom, my mom has the most beautiful head of blonde hair, you guys, but she does not, once she washes it and styles it, she does not want to get it wet, but she loved to swim. So when she swam, she'd do the swan, you know, with her head out of the water. So that's kind of all I knew. I knew how to float. I knew how to not drown, but I did my first race and I was horrendous. I got laughed at. I had... A camel toe the entire time I was on the run. I ran the first mile of the run with my bike helmet still on. Like I was a disaster and I came in last place. And I had never like felt she literally was last, like her mom even said, like dead last. And then you waited for the awards and your mom said, Darling, I don't think you're getting an award, but you waited and you did. We waited. I didn't get an award. <laughs> Anyways, that night, um, 
as far as I knew, I'd never felt so alive in my entire life than I did during that race. I was so happy. But that night I got home and I got in bed and you know how we all get kind of vulnerable when we get in bed at night and we think about what we did wrong or how we embarrassed ourselves. And I suddenly was seeing all the things that I was oblivious to when I was racing. And that was the kids laughing at me, you know, people saying, oh my God, she's got a camel toe. Why is she running with her helmet on all these things? And I started to cry my eyes out. And I went into my mom's bedroom and the first thing she said was, honey, I'm so proud of you. You did it. Now you can go do the things that you're good at. <laughs> and I said, no, mom, I'm going to be the best in the world in this sport. And she looked at me like, what? <laughs> what do I even say to this? But that declaration to the person that meant more to me than anyone else in my life and to myself, um, was so powerful because I then devoted every ounce of my heart, my soul, my spirit, my time, everything to make this dream come true. And, you know, it then started from there and it was a long process um, with a lot of failure, failed a ton along the way. But when we fail, it's not really failure, it's just learning. That's when we fail, when we fall short, when we're disappointed, we we're learning and we're growing and we're finding out what works and what doesn't and what we need. So um, it was the most incredible journey of my lifetime. And um, eight years after setting this goal, I achieved my goal of becoming the world champion and the number one triathlete in the world. And it was the impossible dream coming true. And most importantly though, um, I found a love for myself. I found an appreciation for myself. I understood my worthiness as a human being and I respected and appreciated my, my mental toughness and my ability to overcome and my willingness to be afraid, but do it anyway. So that was the greatest gift of all was a love and an appreciation for myself. Becky. See, I should have gone first because yeah, <laughs> I can't even compare. Oh yes, yeah, she can. Her story is Mine's incredible. not as exciting, but um, I'm actually an identical twin. Um, and a fun fact is I'm identical twin with identical twin nieces and my twin sister was better at everything. She kicked my ass in swimming, athletics, cross country, netball. The only thing better I was better at was really basketball and soccer. And I decided at school, I'm going to take a triathlon because she didn't want to do it. So I'm like, oh yes, I can actually beat my sister at something. And in the first year of the sport, I managed to, and I think the competitiveness was why I was good. I just really like Siri wanted to find myself. And the first year in the sport, I'd qualified for world champs and I ended up winning um, the junior world championship title in like way back in 996. And I actually felt like for once I wasn't overshadowed by my sister, but I thank her to this day because she's the reason why I was, um, you know, such a striver and a high achiever. And, um, but I think by the time I was 16, I kind of got a little fed up with being like the second best to everything. So yeah, she, I think my twin sister were really, really close actually, but, um, but that's why I took it up um, just to be a little different and try and find myself. And obviously um, hiding the, I, my identity that I was gay, that was, that was tough growing up with a twin and she's dead straight. Like my gay friends joke, like, <laughs> is she bendable? I'm like, no, she is not. My twin sister is very straight. So that was, that's the only difference between my twin and I, but, um, no, no, yeah. there's another difference. Oh, you guys, what's that? Her boobs? No, because oh. they look exactly alike. <laughs> and the first time that she came to visit our house, you know, I like to be playful with my wife and sometimes I'll go, oh my go God, behind her and slap her butt. And I saw my wife in the fridge getting something and I thought, oh, perfect opportunity. I'm going to run up behind her and give her a little, you know. It was a dry hump, okay. And this I is, felt- I This is like private chat. No, it's but... not. There's a lot of people on here. <laughs> no, Anyways, <laughs> we're, we don't leave anything out. <laughs> anyway, so I go and do my little thing and the butt was not as hard as what I'm used to. <laughs> This one's, and I'm like, as I'm holding her hips, I'm like, it's not my wife. That's not my wife. <laughs> and it was her identical twin sister. She oh my care. God. She, she was loved. amazing though. She, she was, was like, so yeah, okay, Siri, <laughs> tell us what you really think. It was awful. That's one of my most embarrassing moments, just so you all know. It's just anyway, anyway, it's getting R-rated. Yeah, yeah, no, but that's pretty much all. And then they asked how we met. Um, okay, so 
keep it yeah, a, you a tell little shorter, story. baby. Yeah, you tell yeah. the story because you keep it short. Well, well, I was racing juniors. I did my first junior world championship. It was actually year that, that I won it in 96 in Cleveland, Ohio. And Siri was racing in the professionals. And I looked up to all these pros. And I remember just seeing this woman who just had this charisma. And I think she was like top 15 that day or something. I doubt and then we, we continued to race on the circuit. And me as a junior, her as a pro. Um, so juniors like under 21. And I always kind of looked up to her. She was just winning everything. But one thing about her that really stood out was just she had she was just so much humility. And um, she'd always talk to me. And I think, oh my God, she's like talking to me. And like all the I other pro- like, oh, she's talking to me. Oh yeah, you did not. And then all the other pro women were so snobby. Like it can be a little bit of a snobby sport. And you know, they're they're really well known and recognized um, all the top athletes. And I was this little junior burger looking up to Siri and then I never forget, I met her in a lift and I was like, oh, this woman's amazing. But I was like nine years younger and I was very emotionally immature. And then we met literally like 15 years later, which was now what, 2012 again. I asked her to coach me. I had to beg her to coach me. Um, And we literally fell in love within that first week. We already knew each other quite a lot from the circuit, but um, yeah. I I knew it was meant to be you guys because as a coach, and I used to coach field hockey and lacrosse, like boundaries were like the most important thing. Like you do not fraternize with your, with your athletes. And, and, but we got put into a house together in New South Australia. And the person that was arranging where we were all living had promised me I would have my own place. I didn't care if it was like a tent on the beach. I just wanted to be alone. I didn't want to have to share with an athlete. And they said, Siri, you're sharing with Rebecca keep but don't worry you have the whole upstairs she has a whole downstairs and for some reason when she said it was Rebecca keep I was like okay with it and I was exactly the same because I hated sharing rooms I just hated it but when I said it was Sarah I was like yeah I could probably put up with her <laughs> and we didn't know we were falling in love but we were falling in love throughout the camp to the point that I when I realized it I brought my entire squad together and this is a squad of like world championships and some of the top athletes in the world and it would be a and, problem. an ex-boyfriend which you know I was obviously ex-boyfriend. never in love oh with. your yeah. ex-boyfriend oh my god so that made it even worse she had the ex-boyfriend <laughs> Anyways, so I brought everyone together and I said, look, I need you all to know that something has developed between Rebecca and I. And if you guys aren't comfortable with that, you know, please express your opinions. And we had decided that if they weren't OK with it, that just retire. she was either going to retire or I was going to stop coaching. That's how much mm-hmm. we how strongly we felt about each other. And yeah, I mean, willing to give up everything that we'd worked so hard for for one another. but. Luckily, we had a group of incredible human beings that had seen me live a lot of my years with no love, and they were so excited that I'd found that, and they loved and respected her. So here we are. Here we are. We got married in 2015. Yeah, sorry, guys. Now we just have to shut up. Okay, sorry, everybody. There's so many things I could say, and all I say is like my cheeks are really tired right now (laughs) from like smiling and laughing so much. So thank you for that. Oh my God, we do talk a lot. Just go like Wait, this. You. Oh, sorry. <laughs> I love it. it you know, this I love value. it. You, you guys are adding so much value, and like, don't you get? Give us a heart if you guys love this shit. <laughs> like, you guys are equally as authentic as us. It's like what you see is what you get. Like, there is no like cover ups or anything, and you know, we appreciate it so much. And also, Sari is terrible at swimming. Yeah. <laughs> she's still fucking terrible. I, I, I swim like a pig that's about to sink. Yeah. So maybe you guys could you could give me a lesson sometime. Totally but it's fun of me all the time because of that. Um, but Stop. You're doing it. That's you guys are doing matters. a triathlon. That's it. We're, you're going to. Yeah. Yeah. I would love to. I would love to. Um, maybe we should connect afterwards. But, you know, something that's you guys said so many powerful things. And maybe like I'll, I'll recap like some of like the really powerful golden nuggets that I heard. Um, you know, Siri, when you said finding your vehicle that makes you feel alive, that spoke to me so, so loud. Like, I feel like it's not until that moment where you find that vehicle that life is just never going to be good enough. And when you find that vehicle, it doesn't matter like how much pain you're experiencing, how much failure, you still have that power and grit 
within you to keep on pushing. Obviously, like your first triathlon experience, I mean, you know, like looking back, just like from a logistical standpoint, it was like horrific, but it made you feel alive. So you're like, I'm gonna keep pushing and I'm gonna keep pushing. And anything that you do consistently enough in a, you know, over time you get better and better. And, you know, so many people have a hard time understanding that. And, you know, that is such a beautiful thing to, you know, bring across because eight years later, didn't mm. happen overnight. Eight mm. years later, like you went from being last place to being a world champion. Like anything is freaking possible you guys and you ladies are like a real like manifestation of it so so powerful it sounded like that that comment from your mom too and like this event this vehicle this thing that you found that gave you drive that that made you feel alive gave you purpose and then when your mom is like okay now go do things that you're good at you're like challenge accepted right like there's this like dark motivation now to like, I don't know for you, if it was like to prove somebody wrong, but I know I've had that motivation in me oh, yeah. before when, when somebody's made a comment like that, like you can't, you're like, it just fuels you. And then it gave you purpose and you're like, now I'm, I'm going to be the best. Oh, that was, that was, and, and I continue to get fuel to my fire because I mm -hmm. was laughed at for, you know, I didn't really express very honestly to everyone that I wanted to be the best. Mm -hmm. But they knew how much I wanted to do this, yet I really was awful at it. But the thing is that when you're being pulled to something, this, that's not the time to judge whether or not you are equipped to take this on. Mm -hmm. If you're being pulled to something, that is a yes, you must do this. Because like you guys are saying, there was nothing was going to get in my way yeah. of making this happen. Nothing. And I didn't care how many times I failed. Again, it wasn't failing, it was learning. And that's what kept me going. But my mantra throughout all of it was that I am going to do the best that I can with what I have every single day. I am gonna be better than I was the day before. It wasn't me versus everyone else in the world that I had to worry about. I mean, I would have stopped long ago, but it was how can I be the best that I can be today? And how can I be better than I was the day before? And if that happened, I knew I was succeeding. And that's all that mattered. That's, that's the momentum I kept building upon. Mm, gosh, so powerful. And Rebecca, what you were saying about, you know, the concept of having a positive pressure, mm -hmm. you know, like theoretically, pressure sounds as if it's annoying, you know, you were overshadowed by your um, twin sister, but the reality is, is that, you know, she's a gift because she helped you to raise your standards through positive yeah. pressure. Yeah. It's the power of, of also having somebody or something to push you mm -hmm. to be better. And I think it's like essential in success of any kind. It's like if nobody's in front of you, you have nobody to, you have no like target to like chase after. It's hard to keep being the best when you're already the best because it's easy in your mind to be like, oh, I'm already, you know, I'm already winning or I'm already ahead or whatever. And so it's easy to kind of like back off the gas pedal. But if somebody is better than you at something or pushing you, like it just, it gives you like that's, that's motivation and that's power. Proximity is power. Mm -hmm. Have to surround yourself with people that are going to kick your ass so that it does force you to get better. And it does inspire you and show you where what's possible. I think that's so important. And you've you've had that all along with yeah. Sydney. Yeah. And we joke about it now. I mean, she she laughs because she she actually thinks that she's like, no, I wasn't better at everything. I'm like, ah, oh, yeah, you were. And name one thing. She's like basketball. And I'm like, okay. But she literally like can't remember it. Like she doesn't remember it like that. Like it's funny how she remembers it that we were kind of the same. Like even with school with grades, like she was always in the top class, and I was like in maybe the third highest class. I was never as academic as her. But she doesn't really remember it like that. It's kind of funny. Yeah. 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 Aww. So you know, going back to what you were saying with regards to on your first race, you were came up last and then you know that journey of going from last place to being the best in the world 
you know, as we're entering 2021, you know, we always hear about this concept of visualize and like set your goals. And, you know, it might sound so cliche and, you know, what did visualization and goal setting, how did that help you to, to get from, you know, last place to first place once you were in the right vehicle? Okay, so first of all, I think that it is as far as manifesting your desires in your life, manifesting your dreams coming true. It is so important to every day take a few moments to close your eyes and literally picture it happening. What are you feeling? What do you hear around you? You know, what are people saying? What are you thinking? How have the people around you been touched by what's happened? See it happening because so often, like if I had spent every day just focusing on how much I had to do to get from where I was to where I wanted to be, it would feel so overwhelming and so impossible that I may have given up. Mm. But every day I got in contact of what it would feel like to actually reach that ability level and to achieve that ultimate goal and who I would be and I'd love myself and I'd appreciate myself and all these things. So that's a key is to always see it, see and imagine what it's going to feel like and who you're going to be, what you're going to look like, what your life is going to look like when that happens. That's super important. But another thing, you know, in 2000, I was trying to make the Olympic team and for 365 days going into the Olympic trials, I visualized the perfect race from start to finish, everything going perfectly, me crossing the line, finishing, winning the race, making the Olympic team. The day of the Olympic trials, I went out, the gun went off, I dove in, and within the first 30 seconds, I got dunked under the water, elbowed in the face, and I lost the front pack. I think it was me that elbowed you. <laughs> it might have been. <laughs> might have been. I hadn't visualized this. All I had visualized was everything going perfectly. Mm. And so I had no response to this. I was going as hard as I could, but I was going backwards and just kept getting passed by people. And I felt like I was you know, going harder than ever, but going nowhere. I choked, I was choking on that day. And because of that, I, I made alternate, but I didn't make the Olympic team. The greatest gift in that is that I realized that when, well, there were a lot of amazing gifts, but in regards to visualization, the gift is that when you visualize, you want to also think about the things that could get in the way and see yourself calmly and confidently overcoming these obstacles. So what I have my athletes do now is I have them envision, you know, having that great workout or that awesome race, but I have them also you know, imagine obstacles that come in the way and what they do about it, overcoming them successfully and confidently, and then ultimately, you know, achieving their dream. So it's important to, and, and with visualization, my first um, sports psychologist basically Mom made me- was terrible. They basically oh. make you feel like just, you know, dream it and it'll happen. Like, no, <laughs> yeah. you gotta do Kumbaya. the work. Yeah. You gotta do the work. And- <laughs> I mean, the best way to manifest that dream coming true is to do the work, but also to be really present with your progress along the way. So I used to keep mm -hmm. a journal and write every single day the work that I did and how I felt and the progress I made so that when it was time for race day, I could flick back, you know, three, four months and my proof was there. My proof of the work that I've done, the progress I made, the things that I did. And that would give me the confidence, the mm. honest confidence so that I needed to perform. Can I add to that? Please. I'm going to brag a bit and you need to shut up. She's not very good when I like to brag well, about it. you don't brag either. No, but just let me tell them. So she didn't qualify for the Olympics. The Olympics came around in 2000. I got to watch that. I didn't qualify either. I remember being in that race and I got pummeled as well. No excuse. I just wasn't good enough then. But um, probably me. 2000, I think we were fighting each other. But no, we were probably hugging each other. <laughs> anyway, so the Olympics came around in 2000 and Siri was ranked world number two and she was not in the team. And she's ranked world number two. But the great gift from that was she was in that race and then two weeks later the olympic gold medalist bridget McMahon, no two weeks before the olympics. oh two weeks before the olympics before bridget mcmahon who won the gold medal two weeks later and magali mesmer who got the silver siri raced them two weeks before the olympics and she beat them 
and they won gold and silver two weeks later. And bronze, it was the exact same. Yeah, and then, and then they got the, the medals taken off them because they were done for doping, but anyway. But so I beat them two weeks before the Olympics. Mm -hmm. so but pretty cool. You know, it doesn't matter because I got so many gifts um, from choking. And that's what we also have to understand here, you guys, is sometimes what seems like our biggest defeats or our greatest struggles always always offer up maybe a little bit longer down the line a beautiful gift that changes your life i think you should tell them the um world championship story but i don't know if they've got time to listen to it yeah if do it yeah, you guys keep asking no, questions. it's like the best because she 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 didn't really qualify for it then they gave her she was drinking having wine and a pizza the night before and they're like you're in and she's like what and then McKilly Jones, the world champion and Olympic silver medalist, said to her, so you're racing tomorrow? You, I can see you having a glass of wine there. And Sarah's so like, end. And then she got in. Can you just quickly? Because okay. this right. is the best. But I don't want story. you guys to be tired of me doing no, it. No, it is the best story, though. Okay, so. Come on, I'm going to tell them that. The okay, this is. Wait, was this, so was this after the other? Yeah. This, yes. is first, this is from this picture here is her winning the worlds in Ireland. This is after the Olympic yes. trials. 2001, so after a year the later. Yeah. So, okay, there is value in this story, you guys. Um, the, big, the big lesson here is that when you change your story, you change your life, okay? Ooh. Change your story, <laughs> change your life. Ooh. Okay, you guys are so freaking cute. I love you all. Can you all come over? Um, okay, so on this day, it's so a world championships. All of that happened the night before. The gun goes off. I have a horrible swim. And it's a world championships. This is when people are peaking. Now, up until this day, the meaning I would give that bad swim is if I have a crap swim like that, there's no way I'm going to be at the front of this race. It's too high a level. But on this day, I'm like, oh my God, I have country. trained harder than I've ever trained in my life. I have worked so freaking hard. What if I make this an opportunity, an opportunity to put my head down and freaking go harder than I've ever gone before and see how close I can get to the front of the race. So I get on my bike and I start hammering away, no expectation except wanting to do the best that I can with what I have. And I caught the fourth pack. And then I caught the third pack and then I caught the second pack. And on the last lap of the bike, I make it to the front of the race. And McKeeley Jones, who was like one of my biggest rivals. And now we're good friends. So she's now we're good friends. Friend. But she looked at me and she's like, well, that was fucking stupid. <laughs> As if to say, you've absolutely destroyed yourself. There's no way you're going to be able to run. Now, she was number one in the world at the time. So I had a ton of respect for her. And I took a deep breath and I looked at her and I said, Hey, McKeely, ready to run? And then I'm like, I can't believe I just said that to McKeely Jones. Holy shit, we haven't even gotten off the bike yet. <laughs> and I get off the bike and I'm like scared for my life now. There's a picture of me with like 60 women behind me chasing me. And I take off like a bat out of hell. And first of all, I'm just, yeah, I you know, I backed myself, you know, like I backed myself and I gave myself a chance and I made it to the front of the race. And so I took off and McKeeley Jones is on my shoulder. She's got this big sweaty braid that's like hitting me in the face and her hot breath is like creating like my glasses fogging up. And I'm running as hard as I possibly can. I grab a water bottle. Here, and practice. Here I grab a water bottle and there's no trash. And I am someone who like, you do not litter. It's like, it makes me cry. It does. It makes me cry. But there's no trash can except for one like 25 meters away. And I'm like, okay, I'll do my best. And I fling the bottle and boom, it goes in the, in the trash. And I'm like, it's a sign. It's a sign. It's going to be a great day. So I'm like pushing harder and harder. McKeely's there breathing down my neck. First lap goes by. Second lap, I can still hear her on my, on my shoulder third lap and I'm running harder than ever before. And I see my mom and she's like, you're winning, you're winning. And I'm like, no, I think McKeeley's still there but I was actually imagining her still being there. And then 10 meters down the line, my coach is like, coach is real so hard mean too. Like, He's oh. like, you haven't won anything yet. And so <gasps> I like click into an even bigger gear. Like I didn't even knew like that I had this in me. And I'm running faster than I ever have before. And I crossed the line world champion. But guys, 
imagine if after the swim, because I had a crap swim, the worst swim, imagine if I just gave up and said, oh, it's not my day. Mm. Like we all have to know in life in general or in a race, or in a meeting, if you start out bad, it doesn't mean it's over. It could be the greatest day of your entire life. Your year may not have started out great, but this could be the greatest year of your life. Don't give up because of that one bad moment. Like, excuse me, back yourself, believe in yourself and understand what you're freaking made of. You've got magic inside of you, but you've got to believe in it and you've got to give yourself permission to access it. Sorry, I get yeah, emotional. Boom. I just love this. I story. get emotional. Yes, that's, yes. that's absolutely incredible. And how far behind you was she actually? Like 48 seconds or something by the end. Yeah. Oh, like almost so, a lot. And the reason that I ask is because I play mind games with myself on purpose. You didn't do it on purpose, <laughs> but I do that kind of thing on purpose. This might sound stupid, but we were in the CrossFit like yeah, we competitive know. for a while yeah, yeah. and I would literally imagine that like the best CrossFit athletes and we were like on ESPN and they were announcing literally like I'm running I hate running and they're like announcing like oh my god you know like um Annie Thor's daughter or like uh, uh Sam Briggs is right behind Aaron Atwood like she's she's catching her is she gonna get her and I would like literally like play this in my head like I'm beating everybody but like, you didn't even know it happened, but there's so much power in like, in what's going on in your mind. Yes. Yes, totally. It was a phantom McKeely. And, and what I did is I was using that to like, well, actually I didn't know I was doing it. Like I said, I honestly thought she was still there. I could still hear her breathing, but you're right. I mean, playing those kinds of games, if you want to call it with yourself or, or being imaginative like that is huge. It we do, we do it in more. training all the time. Yeah. When you do it with your athletes. But I have to have to say, I have so much respect for CrossFitters. Like I was checking you girls yes. out. Oh my God. On social media, I'm like, oh my God, that's another level. Like I dreamed, I actually thought I might go into CrossFit. Then I looked at what they did and what they lifted and what you guys do. And I was like, there is no way. But we have so much respect for you if guys. If you dream like, of doing it, you look should Look at their guns. Like I've got nothing. Oh. Like, <laughs> excuse me? Do it. You think me, you the body weight stuff. I can't even do a chin up. A I can't even do a chin up. She's what amazing. I am so I'm, humble. I'm, I'm like, full, oh, you're full of I shit. I could never be good at crushing it. To do it These girls are like so strong. Like, I can't even do a chin but up. But you girls are amazing. Yeah. Amazing. And we were, we were looking we were like, at, like, and we're just like, wow. <laughs> awesome. I keep my shirt on when she has hers off. Because I, you know. You get it. I keep my, my arms covered. She's all day, strong, you're stronger day. than me in the chest, though, which is crazy because you've got Zero skinny muscle. arms, but you're stronger. Mm. Mm, no. Anyway. You no, know, the, the truth is, and man, I mean, when you compare sports, it's like it's the same principles, but it's like tomato, tomato. It's like, you know, having a honey crisp apple instead of a gala because by the end of the day, it all comes down to one thing. And it's called what's between your ears. Mm -hmm. And it doesn't matter where you start. And, you know, this is something that we tell like our people all the time, like treat every day as if it's zero, zero. I feel like so many times in life, <clears throat> right. And this is like, you know, triathlon aside, CrossFit aside, weight loss aside, but just like life in general, let's say, you know, like debt, for example, people feel like because in this very given moment, they're in really bad debt, their life is doomed. And, you know, you talked about something that's really powerful, you know, the concept of, you know, like changing your story in order to change your life. I truly believe, you know, with everything that I've accomplished so far, and I'm not even close to, you know, what I really want to do, but that, you have to envision it. You have to believe it. For one, like if you don't believe it, then you are already block blocked. It doesn't matter how hard you try. You might as well like, what's the point in trying? Cause you're like half assing it, but it all starts and it all ends here at the end of the day. And you know, like for those of you guys listening, like wherever you are at in life, whatever it is that you want to accomplish this year, it can all be possible, but you have to believe it. And sometimes in life, we're going to have situations that are going to like hit us, like, and you have a choice 
to either stay focused or get distracted because of the adversity. Um, it's a matter of one thing, I think. It's simply commitment. Yeah. Am I committed to it or am I not? And if I'm not, it's not going to happen. So, I mean, you, you ladies obviously have like such a high level of commitment to the sport, to one another, to your, to your dreams and to your goals. And, you know, so tenacious. And, you know, again, that's why like we have so much respect for you guys. Um, but I know that you had had an adversity in 2020 that was unlike no other. And, you know, like if I was to basically like study you and look back, I'm like, well, maybe all this training that you've done has led to this moment but you know if you can just like share with us what you know kind of rock hit you in 2020 and what did you know visualization reflection and just activation how did that help you to you know be here today um we would love to hear that i want to preface this too because this is going to be extremely powerful um you know we talked about two years ago we met and um you may not remember it, but we always had respect for both of you guys yes. since that day. And we followed you and we just, we've always wanted the best for you and all of that. And one day Sarit looked at me and she told me, and I was like, you're kidding me. And, but both of us immediately were like, she's going to, she's going to oh, dominate. Yeah. So I don't want to give away anything. So like what happened um, and take us through that. Well, I can say, first of all, that both of our careers as athletes, we're so grateful for what that required of us because we both realized that this situation took everything that we had developed, that strength of character took everything from both of us to get to where we are today. Um, but in November of 2019, I went in to actually have a hip replacement because I trashed my body in triathlon and I was doing the pre-op and they came out and said, we can't operate on you. There's something really, really wrong with your blood work. We need to figure this out. And a few days later, um, we got a phone call. I put the doctor on speaker and she said, you've got acute myeloid leukemia. And my wife, was bawling, tears coming out of, out of her eyes. I was just like in shock. And I looked over into her eyes and I had never felt such a deep love for someone in my entire life. And I, for the first time, because I've always thought that people don't love me as much as I love them. I looked in her eyes and I knew how much she loved me. And I said, when I hung up the phone with the doctor, I turned to her and I said, this is not my time to go. And I made a decision and this was the most powerful decision of my entire life. I said, I am going to survive and I am going to thrive. And yes, they told me I had a genetic something that did not give me a great chance. I have too much life to live. I have too much love to give. I have this incredible, beautiful woman by my side. We've got plans, plans together and how we want to make this world a better place. Now, the thing about making the decision and, and you know, when you make that decision, every thought you have, every action you take, every decision you make is with that outcome in mind that I'm surviving and I'm thriving. So what can I do? What can I do to give myself some sense of certainty in this incredibly uncertain time? I am gonna make sure that every single day I leave no stone unturned. I am gonna sweep out my soul and make room for the healing. People that I need to forgive, forgiving myself for mistakes I may have made releasing any resentment, any judgment, any, anything negative that was going to get in the way of my healing. I needed to sweep that out and clear the way for the healing to come through. I, I learned about grounding. I learned about all these different things that could help me heal. I found the most amazing doctors, even though I had 20 different people telling me, you need to do this. You need to do this. You need to do this. When you're faced with a life or death decision, that's going to come from in here. 
That's got to come from your intuition. That's got to come from what you know in all your heart is the right decision. And thank God I made the right one. I decided to document my entire journey on Instagram on my bedhead chronicles. And I was nervous to do this because I've always been, you know, energetic and strong and healthy. And suddenly, you know, I'm taking people through this entire journey. And this woman wrote me on social media and she said, I don't get it. How can you be so positive? You do know that your chances of survival are less than 10%. Cool. And I read this and I didn't tell her for a little while I was going to do with her when I said I showed it to my wife and I was just so upset. And I wrote her back and I said, I am not a statistic. I am Siri Lindley. And I've proven in the past right here that the impossible is really possible. And I will prove that again. I will survive. And then I blocked her. <laughs> But guys, I think I might have written her a couple of messages. So again, it goes back to someone tells you something and that like it gave me more power and more strength. But here's the thing, you guys. We all are in charge of our experience of life and we all are creating our future by how we respond and how we react to things. Now, if I had spent my everyday focusing on the fact I'm dying, I'm so sick, I'm so weak, I've been losing 25 pounds, I've got pneumonia now, I've got this. What if it comes back? That's not going to serve me. That's not going to strengthen me. That's not going to give me powerful energy. That's going to lead me to suffering more and probably getting sicker. So I had to be the master of my mindset. I had to, in every single moment of the day, I was disciplining my thoughts all day long, disciplining it from focusing not on what I was terrified of happening and didn't want to have happen and what I had no control over and what I didn't have. And Moving that over to what do I have? I have the most amazing supportive wife and mom, the best doctors in the country. I have a donor. I, I, I have the energy, the desire, this, this incredible pull to wanting to live. Focus on what I have, not on what I don't have. Focus on what I want, not on what I don't want. Focus on what I have all the control over, which was my own experience of this no, entire so thing. I fucking love Pamela. Like, I mean, she's going to make me cry in a minute. Anyway, I just uh, Pamela, you're beautiful. She's so adorable. I have been Look seeing you too. But in every single moment, I was fueling myself with the right kinds of thoughts. And this, this never got easy. It was in every single moment. The other thing I got in the hospital, I had to be in the hospital for about five, six weeks. And I covered my walls Here, let me get it. with yes. vision boards. Okay, so this is another thing about manifesting. I was manifesting, surviving, and healing. You know, this, really? these vision boards reminded me of what I wanted to get back. I want to get back to speaking on stage. I want to get back to hiking with my mom. I want to get back to more. I want to get back to, you know, riding my horse with my wife. I want to get back to all these things. So it was reminding me of what I was fighting for. Cool. And then the other thing is I had the picture of me winning the world championships because that was my proof. And you guys, we all have proof of times when we achieve something that seemed impossible. We all have proof of times that we had what it took to overcome some horrible, difficult situation. We all have that proof. And in times like this, that's when you've got to access that proof. You've got to face that proof and look at that proof every single day to remind you who you are. This reminded me of who I am. And so I got out, I had my bone marrow transplant and I am now nine and a half months post bone marrow transplant and I am cancer free and I get to live. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Whoa. Siri, I think you got everybody um, I know. a little watery yeah. up in here, to say the least. That's why you all to understand, like, this life is a freaking miracle. Don't ever take it for granted. Don't ever stop believing in yourself. Because in order for me to, to save my own life, I had to believe in me. Okay, I had to be my own biggest supporter. You cannot give up on yourself ever because this life is magic. And every single freaking you moment that cry. I get to sit here with this amazing woman who never left my side, who freaking cleaned my port every day, who 
watch me throw up all day long mm -hmm. and she still loves me <laughs> more than ever this life is a freaking miracle you guys be your best you and most importantly value who you are understand the magic that is within you i'm no different i'm no different to anyone else we all can survive these things but you've got to make the decision to back yourself and you've got to do everything in your power to direct your focus and your mindset and give things an empowering meaning. Okay, instead of saying, why me, why me, why is this happening to me? I said, okay, God has a lesson in this for me. What I learned through this, what I, what I developed through this, how I evolved through this is going to give me an even more powerful message that I can share with the world. Maybe that's what it's about. Maybe I'll be able to give so much more because finally, for the first time in my life, I had to learn how to receive. Cancer gives you no choice. I'm a giver. I love giving. It's easy for me, but I've never been a receiver. Cancer forces you. You can't take care of yourself. I had to have my wife give up her entire life to help me get through this. My mom give up her entire life. And in receiving, I now have so much more to give. Thank you, Becky. This is my superhero, you guys, right here. This is my superhero. And her being a freaking Ironman athlete, which is yeah, was, way more difficult than prepared. what I did as a short course athlete, she knows. She knew that this was going to be an Ironman. And her strength and her attitude and her belief in me and her never doubting that I was going to make it. That helped keep me alive. She's my superhero, guys. I'm forever grateful. And I'm forever grateful to have the opportunity. So thank you, Erin and Sarit, for giving me the opportunity to share this story because, you know, it doesn't have to just do with cancer. It has to do with overcoming those tough times where you think, you know, life is over. It's not. It's only the beginning. It's time to step up. It's time to be the champion of your own life. And it's time to dis decide how valuable you are to yourself and to this world. Incredible. Becky, I care to know, you know, like, go. you wanna go? No, go. Seeing Siri go through, you know, the treatment and whatnot, like, Siri, I can only imagine that when you're going through this turmoil, it's like, you're feeling it, so you know what you're experiencing it. But, you know, Becky, from the other end, from the giver's end, it's like, how does it feel being completely out of control, doing everything that you can to help somebody who's completely out of control? And can I like add a second part to that question is like, what did you learn in that experience that you hadn't learned from any, everything else that you had accomplished? yeah um i think my biggest yeah my my biggest epiphany was that you know I, i'm a we're both high achievers and i think for me you know you go to all these tony robbins events and i date with destiny i always said i want to be more present because siri just she there's always presence with her it's always in the moment like she takes the time to be present with no matter what she's doing and i'm the one that's always like go 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 you ask becky here who works with me go 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 what's next what's next what's next what I got to do, like keep working, like, and I'm, I struggle with being present with my wife. Um, and it's still a work in progress. But when, when we got that phone call, and um, it's funny how the universe or God will send you what you ask for. And I'd always say, like, I just have to slow down and take a breath and smell the roses. Um, and um, I never forget that phone call, because it just brought me to my knees. And um, there's nothing like being made to be present um, when you know that it's a possibility that you may lose um, the love of your life. And uh, man, yeah, that presence just came and, um, and it's been, it's been there ever since. And I just have to, I, I, I had to learn to slow down. Um, and it, it went from running like three businesses to just like, what can I do in this moment to, for my wife or how can I be present with her and how can I, just be there for her and everything my our world just it does it just stopped um because she is my world so and i don't i wouldn't have i just wouldn't even if i can't imagine being alive without her so um that was a huge 
a huge realization and um, I never doubted she, she would make it through, but um, you know, you guys that have partners, you know what it's like when, and there's a lot of actual cancer survivors on here. A lot of our girls have been through cancer, not just once, but two or three times. They're amazing. They were told that they've got less than a 10% chance too, and they're here. And, but, but lying in bed, knowing my wife's in the hospital, and this was all during COVID, you guys. So there was times where I wasn't even allowed in there. And um, I was just terrified of even giving her anything. And uh, I remember just the hardest part for me was just lying in bed and I couldn't sleep because I was just so terrified that, you know, there was always that small chance where you just have to continually, you know, try and stay focused and stay positive. But like, what if like, I woke up and she just wasn't there anymore. And that was just, that was really hard battle every night, leaning over and knowing she wasn't there next to me. Um, every morning I still wake up and I go, oh, she's still there. Okay. But yeah, it was, it was, it was tough, but um, I never really doubted her. And you're right. We, we trained for this our whole lives being endurance athletes. So we, we were, very, we were prepared. You're never prepared for cancer, but we were as prepared as you could be, I guess. So. We're here, guys. It's a happy ending. Yeah. It's a happy ending. <laughs> okay. Do you think that had it not been for both of y'all's mindsets, that you would have been able to have received this outcome? I think it's, I, I honestly believe that mindset is the most important part. It really is. And it's the meaning you give it. It's being able to live for what you know is ahead of you, what you know is ahead of you. Um, but also, I mean, just general well being in life, happiness in life, mm -hmm. fulfillment in life Gratitude. is all about this. Change, like where focus goes, energy flows. You want to focus on all the problems, all the pain, all of this. That's you're all gonna you're going to experience. Mm. You want to focus on all the good, what there is to be grateful for. Focus on all that you have. Have an abundance mindset. You're going to be happy and fulfilled and energized. And as far as manifesting your dreams, you know, the energy, the universe matches your energy. So if you want good things to happen, you got to send out good energy. Mm. But really, and, and I'll, I'll make it simple, you know, focus on what you have not on what you don't have. Focus on what you love and want to create in the world, not on what you don't have and fear or don't want to have happen. And focus on what you have all the control over, not on what you have no control over. And we have all the control over how we respond, how we react, the meanings that we give things that happen to us. You can find an empowering meaning for everything that happens to you in your life if you want to. And instead of focusing on problems, focus on all the possible solutions. But no matter what's going on in your life, no matter what's going on in this world, yeah, there's a lot of crap going on in this world right now, but there's probably 10 million times more amazing things if you look for them. Look for the good, focus on the good, live your life from a place of love, not fear. And that is what's gonna determine your happiness no matter what's going on in your life. We still had great moments of joy. And then people think we're crazy because they're like, well, was she sad and depressed and upset? And like, poor me, I was like, never, never. And if there was a fleeting thought, like, I guess we have the tools now to, to just change our, our mindset. But she, Siri, just that never, I never saw that in her. And it's like you said, mindset is everything. And the nurses said to us, you know, we had quite a few people. She went through a clinical trial because um, her genetic mutation meant that she couldn't go through regular chemo or radiation. And um, so she went through a clinical trial that only I think nine people had gone through and no one under her age, they were all over sort of 60, but they had a really good success rate. So again, it was this moment where she had to just make the decision. The nurses said to us, oh, we knew that you were gonna make it. And we're like, really? They said, we just knew, we just knew that Siri, like just the way she was in her attitude. And then unfortunately there were other people that so sad like we'd see them in the treatment room and they're just they just didn't have that same that same mindset and they didn't make it and and that didn't really surprise us and it sounds ridiculous because there's obviously everything else that goes with that but it was so important it's just so important. it was everything and think of it this way guys just for an easy you know if you are watching a tv and you're watching this horrible show 
that's making you feel anxious and fearful and afraid and bad and sad and you're crying and you hate it. Are you going to keep watching it or are you going to change the channel? Like we have the ability when we have thoughts in our mind, when we're thinking horrible thoughts that are making us feel anxious and worried and stressed and sad, change the channel. Change your focus. That's up to you. That's up to you. Well, you make it sound easy. Give them an example because I know there's some people that you find this really easy. It's not that easy for other people. Okay, no, but it's it's a starting statement, I guess. So I go out, like for me, it's not as that easy as that. But if I'm feeling like that, I just go out and I just hang out with my horse and then it's like, oh, it's just so yeah. cool. Yeah. How about, okay, so go and work out. Like, so I got pneumonia. I was just starting to feel strong again and I got pneumonia. And I could have been like, oh my God, I'm getting sick. And now I've got pneumonia. And, oh, it's just so terrible. But instead I thought, okay, I've been walking every day. I even tried jogging. I even tried lifting weights. Maybe God is saying, just slow down a little. You're going a little too fast. It's a little too early. And I want you to be fully recovered and fully healed and able to live life to the fullest again. Slow down a little. And since you're not listening in other ways, I'm going to give you a little pneumonia to slow you down. <laughs> Okay, that's 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 what I said in my mind. Or also, she you did. know, um, say you have, you know, you go and you're applying for a job, and you don't get it, and you're devastated over the fact that you didn't get this job. You can focus on the fact, oh, I suck, I didn't get the job, I'm not good enough. Or you can change the channel and say, okay, I learned a lot. This is what this is how I prepared. This is what I did. This is why I thought I wanted this job. Now I know how I can prepare better, or maybe you'll even realize that that wasn't really the job that you wanted, that you were just doing it out of desperation because you wanted to make money or whatever. But like change the channel, give it a more empowering meaning, reframe what's happening to you, mm -hmm. reframe. And that's for you, okay? And this is something, I mean, I live my life this. And, and if you think about like, if you were to say, um, so something happens that hurts you or upsets you, or you feel like you failed or you've been So your rejected. husband leaves you or your wife. Okay. Well, that's horrible. I know, but I want them okay. to have a good example. Okay. So my wife, I'm not even throwing that out there. <laughs> so I'm okay. I'm not even throwing that out there, but say that happened. <laughs> um, instead of saying, why me? What did I do wrong? Ask yourself, what can I learn from this? What's the gift in this? So we all have like a primary question. It's a question that we ask ourselves like over and over again throughout our lives. And, you know, one of the questions that I ask is where's the gift in this? So everything all throughout the day, if something goes wrong, what's the gift in this? What can I learn from this? Mm -hmm. Where's the gift in this? What can I learn from this? That's what I asked myself throughout the entire last year. How much better am I gonna feel asking myself that question over and over every day? then what have I done wrong? Did I deserve this? What's wrong with me? I mean, already you see, I'd like collapse in my chair when I ask those questions. But so the meaning that we give things, even when in regards to life, like how do you finish this sentence? Life is. Now, hmm. if your answer to that is life is so hard, you're gonna find hard <laughs> every single day, year after year after year, because you will look for proof of what your belief is. Mm -hmm. Now, mine is life is a gift. Mm -hmm. So every day I'm like, where's the gift? Where's the gift? I'm like a little kid on Christmas every morning. <laughs> she so is, and say, it's quite annoying. <laughs> <laughs> but you can see the different experience that you're going to create in your life, right? So really pay attention to, um, yeah, I am, how do you finish that? Life is, how do you finish that? You know, and, and find a meaning that empowers you. Sorry, that was, I went no, it was so good. but I hope that helped. So good. You guys type it in the chat box. I am what? And how are you loving it? I feel like like we can chat with you guys like all day. So we're going to have to come out to wherever you are. <laughs> learn We're in Colorado. About horses and like just- well. Yes. No, okay. you finish your, I totally, sorry. I well, I'm trying idea. to read your mind. Like, well, when we drive to Miami, we can stop there. And yes. Then, um, we could, but, but going back to series vision board, we are starting to do live events this year. Yeah. Oh. And you want to get back to speaking. 
obviously we think alike we have the same core beliefs um you have I a, can, you're I, like yeah I, I i'm thinking about all of these life things i'm like both of you together from two completely different perspectives have so many um skill and like gifts now within you because of the adversities right mm -hmm. and there was a couple things i wrote down and like the positivity that you put and and like the ability to do that it's like a muscle and the more you flex it the stronger it gets the more you do it the more it becomes a habit where's the gift where's the gift where's the gift it's probably easy for you now but i bet it wasn't easy in the beginning right absolutely there was a time where you probably didn't think that way yeah. And then the other thing is like the beauty in like attaching a meaning to any event is that that's a choice. It doesn't matter if it's true or not in your mind, it becomes the truth if you believe it. So right. you can choose what is the meaning I'm attaching to this event and let me run with that. That is now my reality. Yes. And yes. it's so, so powerful. So I'm like, you like, I love, I love this. We had a, uh, we had a guy on our show who's a business owner. His name is Aaron Hind and he owns, um, life aid, which is like a, a recovery supplement drink. You guys probably have heard of it fit aid or I'm not sure, but he, right. he built his dream house in Santa Cruz, California. And wow. when all the fires came through his like beautiful dream house, like to ashes, no. ashes, and he got interviewed from a, a reporter and they were like, how does it feel to be a victim of a fire? He's like, first of all, I'm not a victim. And I was like, and I will never forget. I was like, you are not, it's a choice, right? Choose to be a survivor, choose to thrive through the situation. And maybe that means you have to attach some silly meaning to something and make it your truth. That's right. So powerful, so powerful. Yeah. You are what you think you are. Amazing. Yep. What you focus on expands, and this is something that you said before, but you know, you guys, the reason why this is a life-changing conversation is because if you accept wholeheartedly, if you accept the fact that you have the power to generate positivity, that you are in charge of controlling your attitude and that you have the opportunity to surround yourself with like-minded people yeah. who expect more of you and who want the best for you, then that's it. That's all you need because anything is possible. It's just up to you to create it. Right. Um, can I say one more you thing? You guys like totally speak our language. Like yeah. I feel like it's just us. Yeah, it's crazy. Awesome. Yeah. awesome. And I take this too, like from from the you know the sport that you guys were in, like the and the lessons that you learned from that. When you are having to create. Uh, a meaning or a, a scenario to get yourself through a situation like Siri, when you were talking about, I didn't visualize shit going wrong. <laughs> <laughs> I only visualized the perfect race, but not that you want to focus on the things that will go wrong, but you need to be prepared for them. Mm -hmm. And when you, in life, when you just have this understanding that like, I like to say, and I think I heard it somewhere and I don't remember where I would totally give credit if I remember, but it's like plan for the best or plan for the worst, hope for the best and expect surprises. And yeah. if you expect surprises, you're not surprised when things don't go the way that you planned. You just, instead of saying, oh my God, and, and get taken out by it, you say, oh, well, I knew something was going to go wrong somewhere. What meaning am I going to attach to this and how am I going to run forward with it? Awesome. Yeah. Awesome. The reason why I truly believe, you know, it, it doesn't matter like what form of fitness you do, be it triathlon, be it functional training, be it CrossFit, whatever. The reason why it is so important that you just find a vehicle that you love is because anything that you want to accomplish in life is going to be 10 times harder and it's going to take 10 times longer. But 
if you have already trained yourself physiologically to expect that, when shit goes sideways, you're just going to come out of it stronger. Mm -hmm. And that's why, who is it? Mark Ripita, who says, um, fit people are more useful in general and harder to kill. <laughs> that's awesome. Who do you call when you want to move your house, right? <laughs> it's true. It's true. But hey, so we, we talked about, you know, um, just life-changing experiences, but you guys are also on a mission that's even bigger than yourselves. And, you know, that mission has to do with saving lives. So can you share with us a little bit um, about your mission, the name of it, what you guys are up to these days? Yeah, um, so we can tell you how we kind of got it started. Um, so basically, I grew, I grew up, I was a country girl. I grew up on a farm. We had cattle and dairy. Um, I'm a huge animal lover. I know all these guys on here are too. Um, I had a horse. I couldn't really ride, but I just loved animals. I was just always saving animals and um, just loved being a farm kid growing up. My grandparents' farm, little country town in Australia. And um, I used to speak to animals like they were people. Like I honestly, like other than you guys, like I, I feel like I love animals almost more than humans. Like there's just that, that, that I don't know, unconditional love. And that's how Siri and I, like there's so many things that we value that the same and we connected with that as well because she's a huge animal lover. Like she will literally use my brand new sweater to drag a prairie dog off the ground, off the road that's already dead in traffic on a highway. This has happened. I'm like, oh my God. So she's another level altogether. But um, yeah, we started rescuing horses in 2016 uh, when we started a triathlon club because we realized we just, we needed a deep why to doing what we were doing for our business. Like we really wanted to help athletes and help people achieve their goals in, in the sport of triathlon, but connecting it with this deep why of like, we just, we started with the dogs actually. We wanted to help rescue animals. And, um, and then, uh, and now we've saved like 130 horses from slaughter um, through our Believe Ranch and Rescue 501c3. We created our 501c4 um, horses in our hands. Um, hopefully someone can add our Instagram handles up on there, but that is our, a lobbying education and um, uh, legislation um, organization to pass a bill that's known as a SAFE Act to ban horse slaughter. Uh, so no more horses in the US get shipped to slaughter. So right now there's around 60,000 a year um, that is shipped to slaughter and it is the most inhumane barbaric pipeline I have ever seen. Um, that's how we got started. Um, and Siri can tell you the story about that because don't ever Google like horse slaughter. It is just so barbaric. And we decided we're on a mission to end this practice. And it's so funny because again, coming back to the sport, people say, oh, you're never going to do that. It's been 20 years. They've tried to pass this bill for 20 years in Congress. All the animal rescues, all the horse rescuers, all even close friends of ours that are horse in horse rescue, all the horse industry are like, it will never happen. You're never going to do it. And I'm like, watch this space. And we're getting really close to you space. guys. In so the just, last but year. tell them why we started it because it's. it's uh, well, so I rescued my first horse. I had nothing to do with horses my whole life, but um, I rescued a horse in 2015 named Savannah. And actually. Yeah, sure. Can you turn them and show that wall? But where is it? Can you guys oh, see? There she is. Yeah. Okay, so she is a strong, feisty, freaking <laughs> powerful girl. Okay, and I rescued her Beautiful. in 2015, and I didn't even know how to ride a horse, but I rescued this girl, and she, I have never experienced such self discovery as I did working together with this horse because you have to convince them that you are strong enough and trustworthy enough to be their leader. Mm -hmm. And um, I learned how to ride on her, even though she is like a beast. <laughs> um, anyway, she changed my life and, and I was experiencing levels of courage and bravery that I never even knew existed inside of me. And one day I thought, what am I rescuing her from? So I got on Google and I Googled, do and to this day, like this video doesn't pop up, but the first thing that showed up, like, why would I need to rescue a horse? And it said video of horse slaughter. Mm. And close your ears for the next five seconds if you don't want to hear this. First of all, they have a three-day trip in an overcrowded truck where they're breaking legs, getting eyes popping out, no food, no water. When they arrive at the slaughterhouse, 
they are, because their horses are so big and they flip them around a lot, they have to be shot multiple times in the head. They pull them up on a pulley. While they're still alive. While they're still alive. And they are dismembered while they're still alive. In front of their friends. All their friends that know their next are around them. It's just. It is. I'm saying this with no emotion because I can't, if I connect to it, I'll be like, blow me up. Anyways, this horse changed my life. These horses are healers. Like they have proven to help people, cure people of PTSD. They help kids with autism, kids with disabilities. They help people with addiction. Sometimes it's their last resort and they work with horses and that's what gets them sober. These horses, when I came home from my bone marrow transplant, I said to Beck, I wanna ride my horse. And she looked at me and she said, there is no freaking way you're riding Savannah. Because Savannah's right like, she's I'd lost challenge. 25 pounds. I was super she weak. She was 110 pounds. And I said, I trust her. Horses know they're intuitive. They feel your feelings. They know what you need. And I got on my horse and I'm not kidding you, you guys. She okay. took these tiny little baby steps. <laughs> I can't see your feet, babe. Oh, sorry. Okay. <laughs> tiny little baby steps when I got on her, she didn't even try to reach down and get grass. She didn't try anything. She just knew that she was protecting me. Mm -hmm. And as the weeks went by and I kept riding her, she kept, you know, testing and moving a little faster. And then, you know, last week she took off on a gallop and I went <laughs> flying off and she bucked me off. Like she's basically <laughs> saying, mom, you're strong you're now. You're healthy. So stop worrying. Okay. Mm -hmm. You're all right. But these horses are healers. And we knew when I watched that video, I was scre literally, literally screaming, crying, and she came running up thinking someone I couldn't, had died. I couldn't believe it was happening. I was like, how do we not freaking know about this? Like, it's just... But we knew our lives would never be the same And we again. saved five, five horses in the first week. We got in trouble because we only had two acres, and the neighbors... Cut down all the trees. Crazy horse people that are like, these girls have got, like, five horses. Is that even legal? And then we convinced our neighbor to lease land for free and got, like, 12 more. We'd save 32 in the first year, and we're like, this is not going to work. So we were just looking for land, looking for land, and we found a property that was within our price range, 32 acres. We're like, oh, we can have 64 horses on here. This is amazing. Yeah. But then we realized, like, we need to do more than this. We need to end this practice. So we're still obviously saving horses. Um, that's our priority too. But we're like, we're going to pass a bill to, to end this all together. So. And these horses, that we've rescued you guys many have gone on to work at equine therapy centers we run an equine therapy program at our ranch we run retreats that you guys are all welcome to join um but they're healers so um you know it's come full circle yes we're here yes we're saving horses but they're saving humans so um it's it's really the most fulfilling work we could ever do it's just uh we feel very blessed and grateful to have been chosen to do this basically yeah and the word gratitude keeps coming back around. And, you know, um, Siri and Beck, I don't know if, if you guys, uh, like, know about awesome. this, but, you know, we, on, on Wednesdays, we have our Wealth Wednesday conversation. So in this community, we're very comfortable talking about money. Most women are really not. But you guys, money is a symbol of two things. It's a symbol of seriousness, and it's a symbol of gratitude. Okay. And, you know, if you're grateful for anything that you heard over the past hour and 22 minutes, these ladies' time is extremely valuable. And they ask for nothing. They just have a massive mission to help horses, who help humans because they're healing. Then all that I ask you is that you go to the link um, horsesinourhands.org backslash donate and Donate whatever, whatever feels right in your heart. I already looked at the website. You can donate as li little as 15 bucks. You guys, the power of the compound effect, there's currently 45 people in the room. If each of us was to donate just 15 bucks, we would be able to raise almost a thousand bucks today for these horses and change their lives so that Siri and Beck can help to actually save some horses' lives. Thank you guys so much. Actually, Beck's going to put in the uh, comments here. It's believeranchandrescue.org. You were right. That was our lobbying organization. But if we want to, we, we really would be more grateful to be able to save more lives because we kind of have that. That's kind of our priority right now. So I'm going to put out other. other so if sorry. you want to save horses, it's believeranchandrescue.org. If you want to um, 
donate towards the lobbying and passing the bill that's horses in our hands um but you guys honestly like one dollar one dollar adds up we always you know we'll say to people imagine if we had if we had a thousand people donate one dollar we can save a horse can i add the horses in our hands that will work for um so it's a call to action. So we had uh, 114,000 emails sent to legislators and now Nancy Pelosi actually knows who we are. So does Lindsey Graham. Um, I'm sure Trump does too. But thank God that, that now we have Biden, who's a very big supporter of our, of our bill. Um, so if you guys will go to horsesinourhands.org, you can just click ban horse slaughter now. It doesn't cost you anything. It takes 60 seconds. And you can send an email to your local legislator to tell them that you support passing the SAFE Act and ending horse slaughter. And even one email will help. Um, we've had, like, yeah, 114,000. So it takes 60 um, seconds. Yes. It, yeah. You could do that too if you have a chance to have 60 seconds to do that. That would be amazing. Thank you, girls, for allowing us to talk about this it, it means the world to us and oh, um, you, we're guys. truly just so grateful to have this time with the two of you what you're doing in this world is so beautiful you're both just beacons of light and we're truly grateful to have the opportunity to share this time with you hey and the gratitude is mutual look this is something that we've never done on a live show but we're gonna save a horse's life today who what? wants to help us save a horse's life today oh. So Erin and I, as a symbol of gratitude for you guys and what you're up to, we're going to put down 500 bucks. Oh, if you guys oh collectively, God. as I can, a community can help us to come up with the other 500 bucks, you guys, by the end of the day, God. we're going to save a horse. Drop it in the chat box if you're willing to help the cause. Thank you so much, you And guys. guess what? You girls get to name it. You too. get to name the horse. Yay! And yeah. you know what? In, in our money conversations, it's really easy for people to say, wow, you want a lot of money. You're really greedy. No, we want a lot of money because it gives us the opportunity to do things like this. Oh, exactly. Thank I'm you guys amazing. so much. I'm so much. excited. This oh is incredible. God. You have no idea. We will journey this. Um, the next time we get to save a horse, we will go there and we'll let you guys know and you guys can name this next beautiful Wednesday. baby. Oh my gosh, now she's saying, we have 29. We actually not ready to save one right now. Well, we saved maybe two yesterday. In a month or no, so. I think it's oh, next man. week. Here we next go. week. <laughs> she said, this is, <laughs> do you have, oh God. Okay. And, and thank you from the bottom of our hearts to anybody and everybody. Um, we understand that not everybody has the financial ability or, or capability yeah. to, to do that. And so that's okay. Yeah. But um, thank you to anybody who can and is willing to, uh, you know, because it, there are there are really good people in the world, and especially in the moments that we're going through. Like I'm gonna, I don't know why I'm gonna cry because I'm gonna start my period soon. But there's a there's a lot of really shitty things happening in the world right now, and it's more important than ever for one for us to all connect, and for two for us to show what the good things are that are happening in the world. Yes. Thank you. Guys. Thank you. And if we can do anything Thank for you. you guys, please let us know. I'm actually going to like, I, I want to put it out there. I want to do one of their CrossFit workouts. I like I want to sign up for whatever it is. And no, seriously, because I, I only do, I only lift once or twice a week, but I'm going to, I'm going to do one of your, um, one of your plans. So tell me which Excellent. one. Yeah, Excellent. I'm gonna Excellent. Yeah, I'm going to do it. And I want to give away two books today. Yay. So Erin um, and Sarah get one. Yeah, but, you yeah. guys, yeah, you guys are getting one too, but two books um it's called surf scene from the and we're gonna add a trucker we have brand new ones i'm gonna add a trucker too <laughs> <laughs> we're gonna add your rescue trucker so i'm gonna let you two aaron and sarit you guys choose who wins the books um two books i am so thrilled to give them away you two are gonna get one too um thank well, you everybody can i choose one of the two yes i know who it is pamela yep pamela gets one <laughs> so into this conversation i love her so yeah pamela we love, i love snow each and every one of you it just so happens that pamela's like front row center here she on our screen i'm gonna write out email and, address in um, here please um if you can write your uh mailing address that would be amazing and then let's pick a second winner what's an email address that they can send uh their addresses to right there Oh, right there in the chat. Okay, so you guys can send your email address or your uh, mailing addresses there. Okay, so we want, so we're getting one plus two more, plus one more, right? Two yeah, more. Two more. Okay. Two more. Okay, so I, I want you guys to pick a number between three and 44. 
I know you just you just said it out loud. Oh, when we said it out loud? That's okay. You already decided. Great. You're yeah. a fast decision yeah. maker. What's That's awesome. Number? What's the number? Do you have to say it? 11. 11. Kristen St. Louis. <laughs> Kristen! I can't see. Yay, right here. Oh, Wait, yeah. Why the number 11? That was my soccer number. I love that number. Whenever it's 11, 11, she's like, 11, 11. I'm like, oh my God. She says it every day. 11, 11, it's 11, 11. Do you know why I like the number 11? Why? Because number one is great, but two number ones are great. <laughs> Hello, of course. That's beautiful. So is there one more? Yes. Well, I chose Pamela. Okay, got it. So we're yeah, good. One. I mean, you guys can order them on our website anyway, and Siri will sign them and send them where, out. Where, where can they Where can they order it if they want to um, get the a copy? One? I think anywhere. Yeah. I think yeah. anywhere. Amazon. I'll, I'll, it's on here too. I'll do the. It's called Surfacing from the Depths of Self Doubt <laughs> to Winning Big and Living Fearlessly. But she also has audio. I'm, I'm a fan of audio. You can download on audio too. I, I like audio. So That's amazing. Actually, I think I might have a third one in my bookshelf. Let's go for one more. Let's give one more. See the one. If this <laughs> one's been a wrong one. This one's been used. One you more. This remind me of ourselves so much. It is insane. We do. See the we one just sound like oh, so cool. Okay, so we've got one more. So we'll, yeah. we'll do another number. Beck, this time you. you no, no, let the girls choose. No, but they, we, they write it. Okay, you guys choose a number and they have to guess. Is this, oh, she's we're already gonna, signed this one. Okay. We're going to choose a number. Okay, so I would say 24. Okay, so. Oh, wait, but you can't tell people yet. How's this working? Oh, I can't. We can't tell people? No, because they're going to guess. So you guys think oh. of a number. <laughs> oh, we were choosing. Okay. Okay. We have to pick a new one. Okay. Okay, just whisper it to between each other. What, between what and what? Between one and fifty. Oh. Oh, okay. No. Between no. Lot. Okay. Sorry. I'm sorry. You're right. One in fifteen. One in fifteen. Yeah. Okay. Okay. We got it. Okay. Who's keeping track? Because there's a lot of guesses here. What? What's your number? What? What are your guesses? Oh, no, they got to write up with the number they think it is, and the message is here. And yeah, they, what is, what's they, your guess? They first put person to come up, write them up, guys. Between one and fifteen, who put seventy six? <laughs> I love it, oh. Mel. I love it, Mel. Okay, it was Mel Williamson. It was there six. You go. <laughs> okay, so please uh, send us your mailing addresses and yours as well, Erin and Sarit. We're going to get these to you. I'll put my email again. Ladies, I'm going to connect with you in a couple of hours. I mean, I mean, the, the, there's just so much like um, harmony synchronicity. and synchronicity with, with this relationship. And, you know, we, we want to take it to the next level. Um, and us lesbians are known to take it to the next level real quick. Yeah. So, um, it's all good. Oh. <laughs> But, but, um, but, but on a, in all seriousness, you guys are like so incredible. Like, you know, we, we remember when we heard you speak two years ago and we're like, man, she speaks to our soul. And when we feel it, we go all in. And then we also saw the relationship that you have, which, you know, as Oprah likes to call it a soulful relationship, which is very rare to find, but you guys have cultivated it you've created it just more power to you you know we're just so extremely happy and grateful um to share 90 minutes of our time with you because for one we know how valuable your time is and for two if you guys did not get the message today already but today is a gift and this moment is a gift so like this conversation has been such a beautiful gift and that's why i wanted to have this conversation with you guys today because this is the most powerful conversation of 2021 because it is the first one that's why when i hit siri up i'm like can we do january 8th make it be the first one for the year so you guys are incredible thank you so much for you know spending you your time with us and you know sharing with us your life story which is teachings um, so many golden nuggets, you guys, again, thank you for sharing your time, um, you know, and taking time out of your, um, 
day to spend some time with us. We hope that this added so much value um, for you guys. We're going to save a horse today. And, I don't know about you, and, but we're going to save a horse. And this is going to go on YouTube. Uh, currently, there's 4,000 subscribers there on our channel. So more people are going to see this. We're also going to email out the link with the YouTube video uh, later today. And so there's going to be more eyes on this as well. So hopefully, and I'm going to drop those links in the description of the YouTube channel so they can get the book or donate. Um, just so that hopefully it continually can can spread the love. Thank you so Thank much. Thank you so you much, you guys. Thank you to everyone, all of you. I just feel such connection to each and every one of you. I've been flicking through the photos here and thank you. We love you guys. Here's sure. an amazing yeah. 2021. <laughs> Amen. So Siri and Beg, this is how we end each and every conversation with the big heart. There we go. They're doing so well. You guys are rock stars. Pros. You guys have a fabulous day and have an amazing weekend. And here's to an amazing year. Yeah. Hi guys. Bye. Bye. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs>